Hello everyone and welcome back to Art a la Carte. In this video I'm going to be taking you through the process I went through in creating my new Alice inspired piece for the month of July. So I decided to record the pretty much the whole inking in process um, and clean up the sketch process to show you uh, a little bit of how I do that. So I started off this piece with an actual thumbnail idea um, which I didn't show in this video but I actually did it months and months and months ago and really really liked it and then I just put it away in a bin of just sketch ideas and then when I was trying to come up with an idea for this month's coloring page I went through my box of sketch ideas and came across that and was like yes that's the one I want to do it's I want to try to create this one so I took that piece and I redrew it on just a regular piece of paper and then I scanned that sketch so the blue sketch is the one that I did redrew and then I scanned that sketch onto my computer and then started the process of cleaning up the sketch and kind of figuring out exactly what I wanted in the different lines. So when I'm doing a really rough sketch and I know I'm going to do like a cleaned up sketch afterwards, I will generally do um, them in different colors. So if I'm doing this totally traditionally, I will use like a blue color erase color pencil or green and then choose a different color like a red. Um, the reason that I do that is because sometimes it helps me to um, see which one is the rough sketch and which is the cleaned up sketch. When you're doing your cleanup sketch on the computer, it's really easy because you have a wide variety of different colors and shades and tones to use. Um, but if you're doing this traditionally, which I've gotten a lot of comments and messages asking um, how to do a coloring page traditionally, if you don't have all the computer high tech stuff, is it still possible? And it definitely is. In fact, if you look at my first two projects, coloring projects that I did years and years and years ago, I did my mermaid set one and mermaid set two. All of those coloring pages are done traditionally. So I drew them out on paper and then inked them in with a really fine tipped ink pen. And uh, the ones I use are the Sakura Microns. And I will leave a link in the description box below if you want to know where I purchased them online. I'll also leave a link to the cool erase color pencils that I use when I'm drawing traditionally. If you're looking to get some for yourself, I'll leave a link to where I buy them. So back to the concept of Alice. I am a huge Alice in Wonderland fan. Um, Alice in Wonderland and Peter Pan are probably my, my two favorite stories to draw from, but I tend to draw a little bit more Alice in Wonderland related stuff than Peter Pan stuff. Uh, at least lately I have been. And when I was coming up with my idea for my coloring page for this month, I really didn't think about the future too much because, um, so this Alice in Wonderland piece is going out today and then in just a couple of days, I will be releasing the video for the YouTube Artist Collective, which is also an Alice in Wonderland theme. It's themed Wicked Wonderland, which I'm so excited for. I'm having a great time with the piece. And I will leave a link to that video um, when it gets posted live in the description box below so you can check that out. So for all of you Alice in Wonderland fans out there, you're getting like back-to-back Alice-themed pictures. For those of you who are not maybe so much Alice in Wonderland fans, yeah, sorry. <laughs> So I'm going to fast forward ahead through the rest of this cleanup process to the inking process. So this is something I find really, really helpful if you're drawing digitally is that after you finish a part of the picture, so like the cleanup process and you go to, to the next step, which would be inking, is to go ahead and flip the picture so that it's reversed. So the reason that I reverse my picture settings is that if there's any kind of mistakes, say her eyes are not focused in the right direction, um, it's not positioned right there's something off by reversing the picture my eyes can see it better what happens when you're drawing something is that your eyes get used to seeing something a certain way and the mistakes don't just jump right out at you but when you flip it it's like your eyes are seeing a brand new picture for the first time and you're really able to see any kind of mistakes or flaws in your piece so that's why I flip pictures and then I'll flip it back later at the end when I go to print it out. The best advice I can give in this process is just take your time, whether you're doing it digitally or especially traditionally. Really know exactly what your line is going to do, like where it's going to start, where it's going to end, and then um, just go slow. The inking in process is not something that you want to rush or not really be focusing with. If I'm having friends visit my studio during this time, I definitely don't do an inking process. And I generally try not even to do uh, a like live stream. Sometimes I'll live stream when I'm creating these pieces. I try not to do that while I'm inking. Otherwise, you guys are just watching me not talk because the amount of focus that it takes to um, line in things, you just have to really, really pay attention to what you're doing. 
Also a tip on getting a nice smooth line is find your start and your finish point on your line. Don't do a series of little tiny short little lines adding up. Find where you can, you know, curve that line and end it. So you'll see that all my lines are really, really sweeping. If it's a super big line, like it's really long, try to use your whole arm to create that line, not just your wrist or even your fingers. Just move your whole arm and that's going to help you to get a nice smooth line. But if you're having problems getting that smooth line, your, your hands really shaky or are not certain, it's just going to take a lot of practice to train your eye hand coordination. So I would just take pieces of paper and just create lines on it and try to get them as smooth as possible and just allow my hand and eye to calibrate, I guess, and just really get confident using that tool. Also, try out different kinds of ink pens. There are some ink pens that are super easy for me to do line art with and some that aren't. And even with different programs, like I'm using my Eclipse Studio Paint to do line art here because I find that I can do a much smoother line art with this program than I can do with Photoshop. There's other things that I prefer to use Photoshop with. I find it easier. And it differs from one artist to another. I have some artist friends that really, really like to use Photoshop to do line art. They say that it's much easier. So don't limit yourself to one thing just because it works for one artist. Try a whole bunch of different things. So if one artist uses this type of pen and you use it and it's just not working out and you've been practicing with it and still not coming together, try a different type of pen or a different type of program um, and see what works best. So I decided not to record the whole inking and process because seriously, it took me an entire day of inking this in. So the final piece is up for sale. Actually, today I'm releasing it a couple of days early on my Etsy shop. So I'll leave a link to that in the description box below so you can go over and check that out. Plus check out some of the other um, coloring pages that I've done in past months. So if you guys color any of the coloring pages, I love seeing what you guys do with them. So these are a couple that some of my friends have colored and sent me. You can send them to either my email or you can post them on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter. And I would absolutely adore to check them out. And who knows, you might see your coloring page in one of the upcoming videos. Well, before I leave, I want to go ahead and do a viewer comment of the day. And Olivia May says, this is so amazing. I'm binge watching your videos because I'm sick. Being sick sucks, but your videos rock. I love working with pencil watercolors. I get more control out of them. Anyway, I hope your day is amazing. God bless you with a little heart. So if any of you guys are out there are not feeling well, I hope you all feel better soon. Take care of yourself. Get lots of rest. Well, I want to thank you guys so much for hanging out and watching my videos. If you enjoyed these videos, check out this playlist or any of my other videos in my archives. And as always, God bless you guys, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.